All right, good morning, everybody. To another lesson on Math for Elementary Education. Let me just get set up here. One second. All right. And as always, uh, please let me know in the chat that you can both see and hear me so that we can get started just to avoid any hidden technical difficulties. For the most part, I think. On the technical side, we've been doing fairly well, but I don't want to say that because then it's then that's when something happens. So I shouldn't have said anything. All right. So last time we talked about some puzzles where we use logical reasoning, Karuji, Sudoku, and hopefully you practice that as you need to. I updated the video with the exercise 2.7 so both larger 4x4 Karuji puzzles are in the video that's in the playlist even though we didn't get uh, to it we're going to move on to our next kind of puzzle called the lady or the tiger now this kind of problem comes from a book I think by John Stockton fairly old now I think just a story um, where at the end of the story whatever the story was the hero uh, is captured and the he's he's trying to uh, I guess uh, win over or get the king's daughter and at the end, the king catches him, and of course the king isn't pleased, and the king puts him in front of uh, two doors. One has a tiger behind it, and of course if he opens that door, he's going to be eaten. And the other one uh, will have his daughter behind it, the lady, and then he can win her. And he has to choose a door. And that's where the story ends not really showing what happens but it does it did give rise to this kind of puzzle called the lady or the tiger puzzle where <clears throat> we have a king that uh, tries to give his prisoners a chance at freedom by giving them some a couple of doors and some of the doors will be their freedom they will call the lady though they might not be interested in the lady, just their freedom. The lady represents freedom, and another door, if they open that door, there would be a tiger behind it, and they would unfortunately get eaten. Now, to give the prisoners a fighting chance, the king puts signs uh, on top of the doors, above the doors, rather, and it's the prisoner's task, if uh, they want their freedom, to figure out which door is the correct door. So we have a bunch of exercises because of course the doors can say different things, different statements, and that changes the game. Sometimes the king gives you some extra rules, like in this exercise 210, our first one. The king announces, in addition to just the game, of looking for your freedom, the king announces that one of the signs is definitely true, but the other one is definitely false. He doesn't say which one. So as soon as the king says something, we can take that as extra information. The king isn't going to lie to us. He adds to the rules of the basic game. <clears throat> okay, so we are the prisoners. We want the lady representing our freedom, and we don't want to be eaten, which would be the tiger. Can we figure out which door is safe to open based on what they say and based on extra information the king may provide? 
So we are doing, oops, that pen is too thin. Exercise, what was the number here? 210. So we don't want too much variety in our puzzles, but we do want to see some variety to see if we can adapt this logical thinking to slightly different situations. Within the Lady or the Tiger style puzzles, we'll see some variety as well. So we don't, so it doesn't become too mechanical and we just shut down our thinking. We have to always carefully think because that's what we want to develop ultimately. Okay. Now, let us see what the doors are saying and what the king is saying. First of all, the king, like I said, announces one of these signs uh, is true, the other one is false. Door one says, in this room there's a lady, and in the other room there is a tiger. Door two says, in one of these rooms there's a lady, and in one of these rooms there is a tiger. All right. So, first of all, I have the issue of how am I going to approach this? Of course, that's always my issue. I want to come up with a plan. Whether that plan is the best or not, I want to have a plan before moving on. I don't want to just randomly hope I stumble across the answer that I'm probably correct. I have no idea, right? I need to have a plan, execute the plan, and then we'll evaluate, well, was that actually the best plan? Do I have options? Can I go back and maybe do this more efficiently? I have to have a plan. And then I also need to uh, carefully evaluate these statements uh, that the doors have. I see that they are a little bit longer than the ones I'm used to, but regardless. So my strategy, because I don't perhaps have a lot of experience at this stage, right? My strategy is to just uh, extend the basic rain and grass type of reasoning. So it's just going to be in words, and I'll see how that goes. And I'll look at the pros and the cons afterwards. So I'm going to start, I'll, I'll help you in terms of where to start, uh, by saying, let's assume, assume, Door, I'll capitalize this one. Door one is true. Now we're going to have a similar situation as in the Karuji puzzle, the big, the first 4 by 4 one, where I assume that T is in a certain position, and then I see where that gets me. And if that leads me to a contradiction, I can then go back and say with confidence my assumption was not correct. So that's sort of the hope, right? So let's start with this assumption. Let's assume that door one is true. Now I have to be super aware of what these doors are saying. Door one says in this room there is a lady and in the other room there is a tiger. Okay, so now if I assume that door is true, again, I don't know for sure. I just want to have a starting point and see where that leads me then what door one is saying is now true for our immediate purposes and see where that where that thread takes us in this room there's a lady and in the other room there's a tiger so then if under this assumption then door one or room one uh, has a lady and door or behind door two you know what I mean has a tiger right that's exactly what the door is saying is everyone with me so far now I will say at this stage as well that I have reserved three days just for lady or the tiger questions that has a lot of time built in to have this be more of a discussion to give me your feedback as we go you'll get the most benefit out of it that way you can't wait don't wait until I ask you how you feel about this. You have to say that is your responsibility. So, in addition to uh, the door one having a lady, door two having a tiger, then of course, of course, also, 
then uh, there is one uh, one lady and one tiger behind the doors somewhere behind doors right I know uh, if under this assumption I know exactly where they are but that also means there is one of each let's see here one of each okay now we'll see as we look at this strategy of the, the I'll call it the wordy strategy of just using words and slowly chaining statements and conclusions together and see where that takes me. It's very easy to, we're writing it down to keep track of it, it's certainly very easy to get confused. And I have to make sure at every, every line that I write, I understand what I'm writing, I understand why I'm writing it, I imagine an annoying friend poking me asking me why can you write this why are you doing this why 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 i have to be ready for that answer every time or with an answer every time so if i assume door one is true then what it says is true and it says there's a lady behind door one tiger behind door two then in addition to that that means uh, there is one lady and one tiger there's one of each but now if i look at what door two is saying it says in one of these rooms there's a lady and in one of these rooms there is a tiger so that would mean door two is true as well then door two is true as well because if I have door one having a lady door two having a tiger then there is a lady and a tiger somewhere and that is what door two is saying that somewhere there is a lady and somewhere there is a tiger well that's also true is everyone happy that that door two is true as well if i follow this thread and see where it leads me for these for this puzzle especially silence is not gonna cut it all right and if it doesn't you have to say something yes Well, we don't know what it proves yet. We've made an assumption. Now we're, now we're following this thread. And hopefully we're getting something we are ideally looking for. Uh, the only way this thread is going to be fruitful is if we get a contradiction. We, uh, I said that in, when we did it Karuji as well. I think I said that with the second 4x4 puzzle that I did during the Q&A session, but it's in the video, that if you make an assumption and you don't get stuck and get a contradiction that proves nothing unfortunately so we're kind of hoping to get stuck so that we can go back and say that assumption wasn't right and that's the only time it actually works but we we don't know yet right right now we're just pulling at that thread seeing what conclusions we can make if that assumption is true now if we assume oh that's an annoying lawnmower that's nice i don't know if you can hear the lawnmower in the background loud for me but maybe maybe discord has some noise cancelling technology that i don't know about if i assume let me know if it's too bad i can close the door if i assume door one is true then what it's saying is now temporarily fact door one has a lady door two has a tiger that means there's one of each somewhere and that's exactly what door two is saying that there's one of each somewhere it doesn't say where, like door one does, but it's somewhere. So now, under this assumption, door two is true as well. So then they're both true. But the king says one of them is true, the other one is false. So I cannot have a situation that door one is true and door two is true. This, so where I got to, is a contradiction. This contradicts the king the king's extra information extra info the king said and what the king says is law it's fact it's extra information i can use the king says one of them is true one of them is false 
Now, if I make my assumption, I get to a point where they're both true. That can't possibly be happening. It goes against the king. So what do I conclude? I conclude that my original assumption could not possibly have been correct because it gets me to a contradiction. It's just a longer version of the rain and the grass uh, logical deductive reasoning. I conclude that door one is not true, therefore false. Door one is false. Okay, it's still a, few, a couple of longer, more, more lines than maybe what we're used to, but it's exactly the same as in Karuji. I assume the T goes in position one. I see where that gets me. It gets me to something that's impossible. Therefore, T could not be in position one. It's exactly the same way of reasoning. Okay. Now we're not done, but we have made progress in that I know something for certain. I know for certain, 100%. Door one is false. I've gotten to that point. That means, yeah, I'm just going to close the door. Hold on. I don't, can you hear? Can you hear the background, or is it just me? Because I can ignore it, but I don't want you to. It's not a bother. Okay, I'll continue then. It bothers me, but that's okay. Okay, so it's very important that as we do our daily discussions that every every lecture uh, you review and those concepts are solid because like you see now we build on it we've done the rain and the grass basic structure of deductive reasoning then we put a karuji puzzle on top of that where we use that now we're doing this where that reasoning comes up again but slightly longer and so we're building on top of those concepts and if those concepts aren't rock solid, then of course it's going to be more confusing than it ideally should be. So if you find this extremely confusing right now, just do a do a self check. Did the are the other the previous uh, discussions or the previous videos are those very solid in terms of your understanding? Otherwise, you'd have to go and review those again. And it's hard for me to, to, to know where you're at, right? But it's very important because we're building on those concepts. So I make an assumption. I pull the thread, see where it gets me. It gets me to something that's impossible because I can't contradict the king. He gives me info. That info is fact. I can use it. And if I get to something that contradicts that, then my original assumption was not correct. Exactly like the Karuji. Uh, 2.6 we did. So I now know with certainty door one is false. Okay. But I also know the king said one of the signs is true, one of the signs is false. So if door one is false, then by the king or by the king's extra information, door two is true fact 100 percent because what the king said is one's true one's false if i know one is false door one then the other one has to be true because the king said gives gives gave me extra information okay so now i know a lot i know know which door is true and which door is false now i just have to figure out how does this work now let's just think about this it's a little confusing for some I have to be very aware of what the doors are saying. I have to be very aware of what I know so far. Door 1 statement is false. Door 2 st statement is true. They say very similar things, but they don't. So door 2 is true. Somewhere there's a lady. Somewhere there's a tiger. However, it's not the case that door 1 has the lady. Door 2 has the tiger. Because door 1 is false. Therefore, it has to be the other way around. So we conclude that door two has the lady and door one has the tiger. I'll repeat that. We know door one is false. We know door two is true. 
Tortu says, truthfully, there's a lady, there's a tiger, somewhere. So there's one of each. Door one says, in this room, so door one has the lady, door two has the tiger. That's not true. So it has to be the other way around because I have to have one of each. And so, 100%, door two has the lady, door one has the tiger. All right. If at this stage you feel like, what just happened? I don't know how I'm going to do this. That's okay. That was sort of my goal. We came up with a strategy of doing a wordy reasoning to get to the end result. With my help, we managed to do it. That doesn't mean the strategy is the best one moving forward for my needs and my purposes. Okay? Just because it worked doesn't mean it's the best. What are the pros and cons of this wordy strategy? I'll call it strategy one. It's just a strategy. I have to evaluate this. Was this a good strategy to follow? Well, it worked, yes. What are the pros and cons to this strategy? Very easy to get confused. Uh, now, take it from me, ha having done this uh, quite a bit, there's another con that every time the question is going to change, right? Yes, Slade of the Tiger, but what the doors are saying will change. Maybe the extra information the king will give me will slightly change. And what that causes is a different starting point almost every time. How did I know to start with uh, assuming door one is true? I just magically knew that? No, I've done it a lot to, to sort of get a feel for which, where to start. But that starting point changes every single time. How are you supposed to know where to start to make it as simple as possible? That is a big, big con that it takes a lot of experience to start at the right place. And then, of course, you still have to pull the threads and figure out the sequence of uh, statements and conclusions to get to the end. So it's very experience dependent. Like if you've done this a lot, you sort of get a feel for where to start, and how to look at it. Certain things stand out. But we don't have that experience. What are we going to do? This is, doesn't seem to be a trustworthy strategy for my level at this stage. Can we come up with something else? Luckily, luckily, yes, we can. So a nice strategy for, for an early stage of, of learning, which we're at, and there's no shame in that, is to have some consistency. I want to, regardless of the slight variations in the question, I want to have a strategy that doesn't really change from one question to the next. If it's a lady and the tiger question, I want a strategy I can rely on. So, let's come up with something else. You can decide if it's better. I have no problem if you like this and keep going with this. But there are pros and cons, and we want to be aware of that. In strategy two, I'm going to make a different plan. My question is exactly the same. This is the question. But I also realize that I have two doors. That's not a lot. Which means, without even reading the question, I know it's a lady and the tiger question. I know there's ladies or tigers behind these doors. My options are quite limited. If I just Look at every possibility there could be. Possibilities. I could have a lady behind each door. Maybe the king is in a very, very generous mood and he puts a lady behind each door. Why not? That is possible. Or there could be a lady behind door one and a tiger behind door two. 
That's possible. Or the other way around. I know nothing, right? I'm listing every possible thing that could happen under the sun. Anything I can think of. Or the king uh, woke up in a very grumpy mood and he puts a tiger behind each door. That is also possible. But because I have only two doors, nothing else could possibly happen. And I really only have four different scenarios to investigate. That's not that much. I have enough fingers for four. So that's not overwhelming at all. So again, I'm listing them all, but these are completely different. Let's call them scenario. Scenario one, there's a lady behind each door. When I now investigate scenario one, and I cannot stress this enough, when I investigate scenario one, I do not think about the other ones. They do not exist. I listed them all to see how many I have, because I wanted to be done with that first phase. But when I investigate a scenario to see if it's actually possible, look at the details of in this question to investigate and we'll see how we do that when i do that i only look at one scenario at a time i see nothing else but that scenario as unlikely as i feel two ladies will be i can't rule it out at all i can't go with what's likely because the question could be hypothetically having a very friendly king so I'll say, I'll say again, because it is so, is the most important thing in this strategy. I listed all the scenarios, just anything that could possibly happen. But when I now go and look at each one, I look at each one individually. Meaning when I look at this guy, I don't look at that at the same time. Those are two completely different scenarios, and that's not how this is done. Okay, so even though I see them all on the screen, I have to understand where to look. I say this, and I know people will not do that. You have to put blinders on and look at what you need to look at, when you need to look at it. Okay, it's a key to the strategy. So now I'm going to investigate scenario one. I'm hoping for a super friendly king. Why not? Could happen. I need to know. So let's see. Now I'm going to investigate. Under the assumption that scenario one is happening, is there anything that contradicts uh, that this could happen? So I'm now assuming for the next little bit, there's a lady behind door one, there's a lady behind door two. Let's see what door one says. Door one says, in this room there is a lady, and in the other room, there's a tiger. Is that true or false? Why is it false? You're right. Right? Door one says there's a lady behind door one and a tiger behind door two. No, there's, there's no tiger behind door two. Right? Is everyone happy that it's false? Now I move on to door two. I'm just seeing under this assumption uh, what the doors are saying. Is it true or false? Let's see. Okay, I've done door one. Now door two. Door two says, someone say something. No. Interrupt me at any time. We have loads of time. We're rolling in time. Door two says, in one of these rooms there is a lady, and in one of these rooms there is a tiger. Door two. True or false? Is everyone happy that it's false again, or we're just trusting that he knows what he's doing and we're going along for the ride? Okay, false again. So under the assumption of scenario one, as much as I would love for this to happen, the pulling the thread says each door statement is false. But the king said one is true and one is false. So the, what the king says, the extra information that what the king says is sort of my check, 
that I can now use to see if this is if this is possible or not. It's impossible. It cannot happen because it goes against the extra information that the king gave me. It's the exact same way of reasoning, but in a more structured way. It's a short version. It's the same as Karuji. I make an assumption. I pull the thread, see where that takes me. If that takes me to a contradiction, it could not have happened. And I know with confidence, scenario one is a no-go. I know, you're, you're stunned. Any thoughts? This is where you say stuff, in case you missed it. Okay, now I just want to clarify, in case there are people, that in, I'm sort of relying on, on my intuition for evaluating this kind of statement, which I call an AND statement. There are really two pieces here. There's a first piece linked by an AND word and a second piece. So I just want to clarify how that uh, works. That when is a statement like this true and when is a statement like this false? Uh, let's just make a new... Actually, I can do it at the bottom here. So let's just note as a side note here and statements. Statements that come in two pieces, and individually those pieces can be true or false, and their combination results in the whole statement being true. Not complicated at all. Okay, so let's see, how can I do this? Uh, I have two parts. I'll, I'll say A and B. Now, sometimes A is true. Sometimes B is true. And then I have to evaluate the whole thing, right? Exactly like this. There could be a lady in, in room uh, one. And there might not be a tiger in room two. These two pieces combine to make the whole thing true or false. So, okay. Let's say here I have two, uh, two pieces. Uh, I'm going to draw a circle. And B is I draw a square. I'm limited to what I'm doing here. Okay. So here is my, my drawing area. Okay. I have the following situation. And I make the statement, I drew a circle and I drew a square. Is it true or false? True. Okay. Back it up. Here is my drawing. And I make the statement I drew a circle and I drew a square. True or false? False. Okay. Back it up. I know I'm taking my time because I have the time, so why not? There is my drawing. My statement is I drew a circle and I drew a square. False, obviously, but I have to be really careful in general, right? Especially when I'm teaching as well one day. Uh, what's obvious to me might not be obvious to someone else or to little Timmy. And uh, if I make that assumption, it comes across sometimes as in different ways to the students. So it's really tricky. I can't just assume this is obvious. There's my drawing. I make the statement. I drew a circle and I drew a square. My, my, my drawing is done. True or false? False. Okay. So we've gone through all the options and if you actually wrote it out, you'll see this is an AND statement is only true when both A and B. 
B are true. So if, in order for an AND statement to be true, I need both the pieces to be true. Any, any other time, and it's, it's just not true. It's false. So that's why when I have a lady and a lady and I looked at door one, door one said there's a lady behind door one, tiger behind door two. The first part was true, but not the second. And therefore the whole thing is false. When I looked at door two, it said somewhere there's a lady, somewhere there's a tiger. The first part was true, somewhere there is a lady, but the second part was not. In the AND statement, the whole thing is false. Okay. Just to clarify. Now, in my strategy two, I have eliminated scenario one. It was wishful thinking anyway. But I couldn't assume that it was impossible. I had to double check. So I move on to scenario two. And again, when I look at scenario two, nothing else exists. This is all I see. And that in itself can take some practice to, to selectively look. All right, lady, tiger. Door one says, in this room there is a lady, and in the other room there is a tiger. True or false? True. Okay, because both the first part and the second part checks out. Door two says, in one of these rooms there is a lady, and in one of these rooms there is a tiger. True or false? Also true. First part, there is a lady somewhere. Second part, there is a tiger somewhere. Both pieces are true. The whole statement is true. I now match that to what the king says. One of the signs is true. One of the signs is false. Under this assumption of scenario two, I got both true. That's impossible. It contradicts the king. That can never happen. Scenario two is not what is happening. And this, the, the key aspect of the strategy is if I look at all the possibilities and I eliminate them one by one, what's left has to be the correct one. Okay? And because I only have four, it's a perfectly good strategy. It's not going to take me too long. If I had hundreds of options, of course, that's a different story. But I only have four, so it's totally manageable. Scenario three, tiger, lady. Door one says, in this room there's a lady and in the other room there is a tiger. It's very important as you do these to really be familiar with what the doors are saying. That You have to really be very comfortable with everything the question says because we need to remember them as we evaluate truth and false things. So let me backtrack here. Door one. In this room there's a lady and in the other room there's a tiger. True or false? False. Because it fails right away. It says in this room there's a lady. No. I need both pieces to be right. The first one is, is wrong already, so the whole thing is going to be false. Door two says in one of these rooms there is a lady and in one of these rooms there is a tiger. True or false? True. Both pieces check out. True. So now I have, under the assumption of this scenario, one door is true, one door, one door is false, one door is true. That doesn't go against what the king said. So this is certainly possible. Please note, that doesn't mean this is happening. It just means I didn't find a contradiction. I have to technically look at the next scenario. Whoops, if I can learn how to write. If I make, ah, <laughs> multitasking. If I make an assumption and don't run into a contradiction, it means nothing. It means nothing. That would be abductive reasoning. To then say, oh, this is my answer. Without thinking about the rest, that would technically be abductive reasoning. I have to check the next scenario. Tiger, tiger. Poor prisoner. But could, that could happen. Door one says, in this room there is a lady and in the other room there is a tiger. No, there's no lady. False. Door two says, 
in one of these rooms there's a lady no no they're both tigers I had two false statements King says one's true one's false and it's impossible so scenario four is not happening now I can say because I eliminated all the other possibilities and only one of them did not lead to a contradiction that has to be the correct one okay so understand why we are saying this not at that stage we're saying this with confidence that this is the one that's happening because all the others were eliminated and one of these four must happen if I eliminate every other one whatever's left has to be the case but if I don't actually eliminate them all I'm still kind of guessing now we can certainly assume and I will confirm that assumption is correct that when we have these questions it is set up nicely to have only one answer so that means that if I get to a possible scenario I can stop and take that as the answer because the question is set up correctly for you to have only one answer in general without having that uh, luxury I don't know right and I need to eliminate everything but our questions that we'll get that I'll give you will have only one when you find it you are welcome to stop if you're out there looking at puzzles in general well who knows who set that up there might not be an answer there might be multiple answers it all depends and you don't know pros and cons of strategy two I can think of pros and cons for sure no just me okay. much more and that's the goal uh, it is much more straightforward and it has the benefit as we do more we'll see that the doors could say different things that's not going to change how I set this up so I get that consistency and that consistency from one question to the next gives me confidence if every question is a completely new situation and I have to come up with a slightly new plan every time that's not going to build confidence it's actually going to do the opposite but if I can have a strategy where I know going into a lady and tiger question I know what I'm going to do I know how I'm going to set it up I'm already more confident then yes I have to look at what the doors are saying eventually but that first step of setting things up and making progress I know what I'm going to do so there's a lot of benefit in that now for our purposes it's not really a con but in general it is that if I have too many options strategy two kind of falls apart it's not impossible but it is very time consuming and tedious and not efficient anymore so if I have a lot of scenarios that are possible maybe I have a lot of doors and a lot of other things happening that this list is just way too long then yes strategy one is cleaner and more efficient if I manage to do it but for our purposes this list is never going to be super long so we don't have to really worry about it and it's all good news for strategy two that said don't feel forced to do strategy two if you uh, like the challenge and you like uh, strategy one go for it I, I'll still be able to understand what you're saying but I'm going to evaluate every line very carefully uh, so be sure if you pick the strategy and sometimes some some people do it uh, be sure that you're doing it right strategy two is certainly the safer one when you're still starting out and, and learning getting the hang of these things but it is ultimately up to you okay now we ha I'll just give you a little preview here we have a lot of questions I, I, I have some explanation in the book about what we just did we have some variations we have this example we have this example and every time the king says something different every time the doors say something different but if I re if I come into this question I don't even care what the king says I don't even care what the doors are saying it's a lady or the tiger question I know I'm gonna set it up like this 
I'm much more confident right away before even checking the details. But we do want to see how the details can change things and just practice a little bit. But see, we have many examples to do over the next two days and there are problems and all kinds of good stuff. But I think for now, because we only have five minutes left, it's not really enough time. We'll stop this video there for our introduction to Lady and the Tiger. And if you feel that anything was very confusing in strategy two, this last bit that we did, uh, in terms of how to evaluate statements and all kinds of things, whatever it may be, uh, but make sure that you've built up your understanding correctly. If you need to go back, uh, do it. It does the time investment to do that will be worth it. But if you build on shaky understanding, uh, then it'll just fall apart uh, later on and you'll cause more damage. Any questions or comments right now? Again, the next two days, we're going to be doing just this. So there will be a lot of time to discuss this as we go as well. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of variations in general, of course, and things can get complicated very quickly, I will say. We do have to be aware of that and, well, it's really my job, and just contain the difficulty uh, a little bit so that it doesn't get overwhelming because our goal is really just to uh, sort of get a little bit better at these things, not be the best a uh, person at logical reasoning and puzzle solving ever. So we'll do some ver uh, variety, but it's never going to be uh, super complicated because we just don't need to. All right, think about what we uh, have said, how you feel about it, what questions, maybe you can identify questions that you have, and then we'll continue this uh, tomorrow. Until then. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.